It's Tabletop Top Time! Time. I'm Jazza, and I'm playing Pro Digi, Prodigy Pro, uh, who is a former human trafficker who is seeking redemption and travelling with his party to try and overturn things a little bit, shake it up a little bit. My name is Jen, and I play Eve, or Eve, or Eve. Um, I am your friend, friendly neighbourhood <laughs> Uh, who's yeah. uh, finding her way into sentience. And I'm Rob. I play Sebastian, a recently rescued, uh, recently tortured, bespoke human uh, who set off to try and make the world a slightly better place and kind of got chewed up. And I'm Dave, the narrator for the evening, and for one night only, you can only enjoy half of my face as a special treat to everyone. Uh, and we're going to be getting into episode three... A reboot. Yay. Did you just Yay. assume I'm enjoying the other half? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, because there'll be inevitably people to ask. I had a brief brush in with someone with the old spicy cough. I am negative, but I do not want to risk spreading it to anyone else. Appreciate it. Just in case. Very kind of you. So we'll be cautious uh, to not close the entire productions. So. What a gentleman. I just wish it wasn't bright and reflective white, but enjoy. <laughs> 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 Pay attention up here. Uh, okay, so reboot episode three. Who's ready? I am so we ready. We just introduced ourselves. Oh, yeah, you're Seb. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought you were already. No. Whoops. <laughs> oh, my God, that went straight over my head. Can I? Can we add to the sound panel? Wop, 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 wop. In the meantime, can you all we add have is stuff like... Can, can you add the name Rob on that button? Yeah, just like like a it's, really it's like tepid me. like. <laughs> okay. Uh. So, podcast listeners, <laughs> enjoy. Uh, I don't know. That was all I had. Oh, oh, oh! That rattles around your head. They're enjoying it. So immersive. So. We got to start, don't we? Yeah, let's do it. Where did we leave off last week? We were sitting around a table. Let's pick up right where we left off. Oh, sitting Whoa. around a table. Tilda had just approached, mentioned the lack of uh, accessibility options at Ugly's Bar, noting the staircase as the only means of exit and entry. And uh, you had just discussed some important things to your characters. I mean, do you want to tell me? That's a recap yeah and i think maybe a little bit out of character if we can try and summarize so we can make sure we're on the same page mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um let's open it all up and see where we're all landing make sure it's in the same place i feel like well obviously i'm i'm biased and pushing towards uh rescuing uh the well not rescuing heisting a whole bunch of eve units that we can use as spare parts um sooner rather than later um but then after that I think it's really going to be some sort of choice between or combination of getting access to new you and the corpse and then also rescuing Riley and and, uh, and Maya. Where yep. are you two sitting? Um, so I think for Eve, uh, at this point in time at least, she is very curious about the goals that you two have as she before we ended last episode eve confronted seb uh, confronted uh, pro about riley um and asked who she was but she's also super concerned for the people that kidnapped seb um and thinks that we should uh, go further in that investigation and try and find uh the she doesn't know this but the doctor that was there in that episode um or the potential lead which was the person that escaped the girl but that's okay. yeah that's it did you say anything? Not yet. Okay. So we both went to talk at the same time. Rob, I should know, but my brain blanked as soon as we both opened our mouth. I'm like, am I interrupting or am I not interrupting? What happened? See, I just opened my mouth and then got lost in your eyes. Ah, thank you. Yep. Enjoy the percentage you can see. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Seb, Sebastian, uh, his recent brush with the unknown organization has left him a bit of a changed man in terms of pursuit. Uh, he's still a philanthropist at heart and wants the best for people uh, that need it, but his motivations have changed slightly. Not that he doesn't want to rescue Maya, but he understands that there are there is more than just that one suffering bespoke. If she is suffering, we don't know. Uh, 
his brief chat with Ugly about the state of affairs within the slums as well as in the city has left him more or less wanting to tackle the growing problem of like discontent and potential rioting within the slums within the city uh, by taking a more targeted approach to any actions he's going to take to try and prevent this, whether that be like, you know, assassination or burning down a building rather than whole scale riot and fires and dead innocents. And that will lead us to starting. But right before we start, I do want to say thank you to an amazing member of our Discord community who helped me with some Spanish stuff in episode one. That is Lex, who uh, actually got a voice line thrown out in the... Oh, you're going to play it now for full yeah. audio clarity. Let's... It, is it, have you I got it I there? I pressed it. it was it Spanish Is it not button? working? I didn't press it properly, maybe. It is quite quiet. Wait, there it is. Is it just really quiet? I can't hear it. I think, that I think one it's works. Just, it's, for some reason, it's yeah, not working. I don't know. But Sorry. in episode one... Uh, it was there. And yeah, thank Lex, you so much, Lex. Lex did some lines for me. And unfortunately, I only got to use one because of the nature of what happened with our secret episode zero Patreon <laughs> episode uh, and where we ended up. So thank you. And let's... Uh, Jump into it. Dive into the old story. So we're standing around the bar together. We've had our chat. And I think it was sort of starting to be at the point where... We're parting ways and going where Wind we need to go. Wind downs for sure. And I think I'm about to head back to the soup kitchen, but before I do, I want to just make a stop past. Uh, where's Zhang? Where did I last see Zhang? I believe currently none, like no one, no major uh, dramatis personae of Ugly's gang are in the bar. They've kind of given you, deliberately given you all some space. Uh, I'd say that Incongruent and Ugly are out on... They have a lot of work they need to do outside of here. And uh, I'll say Zhang is as well. She, You know she's here, but she's downstairs uh, working, packing some drugs, um, you know, poking at things, doing her usual business. Cool. They do run a full, like, illegal medical yeah. drug ring down here too. Yeah. <laughs> they sometimes work. So I start heading towards the exit and then I pause and... Um double take a little bit internally and then I turn the other way and I head down to see Zhang first. Okay. What do I see? You walk downstairs and once you pass the sort of internal offices that you've seen before in meeting room, uh, downstairs there's two gangers that you know you haven't really associated with them. In fact, you don't even know their names. They're fairly new hires that have been brought in. They're bomber gang members but low ranking just pushes and um Zhang is basically going through their stuff. Uh, they've brought back a couple of bags and she seems to be doing like a, a audit or something. You're not entirely sure because this isn't your area, but yeah, she's they're standing there and they both look kind of awkward and nervous. I'm just going to sort of stand near the, uh, the doorway um, in my slightly skulky, weird outside of way with my hood on and just wait until there's a bit of a lull in activity. It seems like she's open for me to just say hey what's up after probably two minutes of checking things and ruffling around you see Zhang grab two bound bundles of fusion injectors load them into uh, a little fake uh, what's it called like a coffee urn uh, a thermos uh, and load them into a fake thermos in the bottom of it. It's sort of like six fusions, like a revolver um, hidden in this thing. And then she throws them into their duffel bags, tightens them up and throws it back to them. But you can see there's like a little bit of something in there that's there's a little bit of animosity in what something obviously that they've got a, got a talking to or something like that, mm -hmm. um, which is very quiet, a quiet talking to from Shane, <laughs> a silent talking to even. Uh, but yeah, and then the two of them leave... Uh, they actually go and you see them, the garage door opens up the underground door that leads to the uh, the sort of secret concourse that leads out of there, which none of you have ever asked about, but uh, that's a thing. And they get on push bikes and actually just push bike up the thing. Hmm. And, Zhang, <laughs> and Zhang turns to face you. Uh, hey, uh, didn't want to interrupt. Uh, you got a minute? She looks around and then nods. Um I had something I, I thought you might like, and I sort of fish around awkwardly in my backpack. I pull out a Discman, um, like old school, like this is, I guess at this stage, a hundred year old technology. 
um, with a shitty pair of headphones. And I sort of awkwardly hold it up. I say, so um, this is, I think, how they listened to music a while back. I find it kind of charming because, I don't know, it was just before data and using files to play music became the norm. But, you know, this was a, a, a point at which it couldn't be hacked. And I don't know, I find that interesting. Anyways, I miss our training. And Conrado's sort of taking it up to try and keep me primed and keep me alive but um it was actually it was actually those first sessions with you and the i sign not dead Mm -hmm. encouragement you gave me that uh i think's really kept me fighting and i i just i wanted to thank you and seeing you pick up seb and take care of my friends seeing you take care of eve Look, I've been really absent these last few months, and I just, I I don't think I could live with myself if I kept going without letting you know how much the work you did with me mattered, and I really appreciate it. And I just sort of awkwardly shoved this uh, CD player forward. She looks at it for a moment without responding in that sort of hesitant, awkward moment pause between the two of you. And then gingerly reaches out and takes it in her hand. I say, you know, it turns out there are hundreds of songs titled Not Dead Yet. <laughs> Weird, huh? I sort of like chuckle and I say, um, this is, I guess you could call it a playlist of exclusively the ones I thought were kind of cool. There's 13 Not Dead Yet songs and, uh, I don't know. I used to listen to it while I trained. Kept me going, and I appreciate that. My favorite one's by uh, Lord Huron, circa 2021, I believe. Have a listen. Thanks. She flips open, like right as you turn to leave, she does that thing where she doesn't seem to show overt gratitude, but even the fact that you're having this conversation is like a step that you haven't had in a while. Um, and as you turn to leave, you get a ping on your uh, ocular bionics and your onboard computing of a message from Zhang. She flips open a little thing on her wrist, a little touchpad type thing, and she's tapping away, typing. You get a, just a notification that you've got a message, which you can choose to open or not. It's how she communicates with you generally. I open it. Cool. The message uh, comes up and it reads, we didn't stop talking because I got shot. How do you react when you receive that? Do you show I sort any? Of, I turn back a little and sign question mark. And she taps away. Um, I've had as many friends. I've lost as many friends from that shit you snort than I have from gunshot wounds. Probably sort of like a little ashamed, shakes his head at himself you know the first verse um, it says all messed up with nowhere to go I stare at myself in the mirror alone it's hard to make friends when you're half in the grave but I ain't dead yet and I got something to say the last verse I've been out way too long heading right for the edge if she asks about me Tell her I'm not dead yet. And I'll walk away. And as you walk away, um, Zhang looks down at the discman in her hands, sort of weighs it, lifts it up and down. And then there's just silence as she watches you walk away. Hey. So, Eve. Uh, Eve is going to go... Uh, it, it's pretty much well established that Eve's been staying with Shane at Ugly's. Or does Eve have a room of her own? I'm assuming not. You stay in Zhang's room. Yeah, cool. So, Eve, gonna, Eve is going to go back to Zhang's room um, and she's going to play some video games for a while. Okay. Mm. Yep. 
and Seb is in a chair. So you're just <laughs> left, left in a wheelchair upstairs. I don't think I got in the chair yet. Okay. I think I'm just oh. propped up somewhere. Oh, oh, we probably should fix that. I'm, no, I'm, no, it's fine. I, I think Seb would be happy to be alone without sensation. Uh, Eve puts like, you know, those like medical alert bracelets. She kind of puts it near you, knowing obviously you don't have the ability to press it, but kind of thinks that like, if you like lean on it or something, that it'll go off. I can't see it. Uh, she puts it near you so you can at least feel it. Actually, she puts it around your neck. Okay. Yep. Yep. So at this point, I know mm. you put something around my yeah, neck. Yeah, I, I tell you. you. Okay. Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> Seb, this is for emergency purposes. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. And then she leaves and plays video games. <laughs> so, Pro, which way did you go? Are you heading off somewhere? I headed up into the street. I'm heading back to the okay. street. So you're out on the street. Yeah. So shortly after Eve goes to play games, uh, Sebastian is in the room and he hears the clipped footsteps of someone light on their feet walking in from downstairs. And the footsteps come closer. Does he say anything? There's a gentle hand on your shoulder. Just a soft squeeze. And there's a crump... There's like a crumpling sound. Uh, you're very perceptive. Mm. And you've picked up from the people in the bar and where they came from. that You're pretty sure this is Jang. Yeah. And you can hear like a crumpling sound of like some old plastic technology like being held in one hand and sort of clattering about a little bit while the other hand's touching you. Um... And she doesn't say anything. She just sits there and, and gently sort of nudges you as if trying to elicit a response. Hello, Zhang. There's no response. Guess we really don't have a way to communicate. <laughs> I mean, I could sign some of them, but I wouldn't know what your response would be. That being said, you're pretty, pretty good at figuring out a way to communicate even though you don't speak. Any ideas on about how I might be able to uh, interact with the world? Got a bit to catch up on. There's a sigh. And then the sound of a, a metal finger sort of rapping on a glass bottle intoned in a way to draw your attention to it. I turn my head in the general direction of the sound. And then there's the shaking sound of sloshing liquid in a bottle. Please. And then the sound of a drink being poured, brought over. And then... A glass placed against your lips, very softly, and lifted. I take a drink. It's hard liquor, as is customary at Ugly's Bar. Yeah, of course. <sighs> and she sits with you for a while until you finish your drink. Just waiting and giving you the opportunity to speak as she doesn't speak herself. Thank you. I'm sure you have stuff to do. I wouldn't, you can go if you want. There's another soft squeeze on you and she doesn't move. And how long does Seb sit there? Or really, lean there? I mean, I don't really have a choice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but context <laughs> clues. Someone moves context. me. Yeah. Context clues. <laughs> like you can move, you can speak, you can move to some degree. Like uh, 
do you just sort of wallow there for a while? At some point, do you seem tired? Um, anything like that? It's late at night. I suppose over the time he's probably asked, like several probably asked questions that, you know, probably can't get an answer to. Mm-hmm. It's mostly just curious about what happened after uh, the night at the Glass Slipper and, you know, what's happened to the gang since then, what's happened to the soup kitchen. But, like, obviously she can't answer any of this. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, just thank her again for what she did at the Glass Slipper, knowing that, well, I don't know, she got injured. No. She, after it's been a good couple of hours, um, she puts her arm around your shoulders, like one arm over your shoulders, uh, and then kind of like another arm softly at your hip, like at your waist, uh, and without doing it to you, gently gestures as if she's going to lift you up. I nod. Okay, and she picks you up uh, with a little bit of straining. She's not the strongest person in the world, but you've lost a few kilos recently. Yep. Um, <laughs> subtle way of putting it, but go on. Uh, and she walks you through some doors and eventually you feel yourself laid on a soft bed. Mm-hmm. And Eve, you hear the door to Zhang's room open and close. And you've got headphones on mm-hmm. and they're gaming, but you still notice. Mm-hmm. Do you react to the entry? Yeah, I'll stop playing what I'm playing in turn mm-hmm. around. I'm assuming it's Zhang. Yeah, it's Zhang carrying Seb, who's oh. clean. Oh. Okay. And, and she lays him um, on the single bed that is in mm-hmm. the room mm-hmm. that has stayed there ever since Songbird left. Songbird slept in her room yeah, for some yeah. time. Yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, and he places Seb on bed. Hello, Seb. Hello, Eve. Sleep tight. (laughs) Something tells me it's not going to be the greatest sleep. Well, have some comfort knowing a medical professional is in the same room as you. Excuse me, I have to kill these noobs now. I go back to playing. <laughs> what kind but, of I don't, but I don't put my headphones back What on. kind of game are you playing? Oh, like Fortnite. Shortly after, you hear uh, boots get kicked off and the sound of like bed springs as uh, Zhang jumps on her bed, uh, the sound of a phone flipping open. And then as you're playing on your second monitor, Eve, uh, a little chat, bot, uh, chat pop-up opens up from Zhang. Uh, and it says he's really hard to talk to. Uh, I'll message back saying the trauma he's been through is a great deal. It is expected of a patient. She It'll texts back. No, I mean, I literally can't communicate with him. Oh, and then Eve <laughs> realises this. Um Perhaps I can help, if you wish. Can you keep this between us? Of course. I think Seb would want that too. Let me know when your round is over. Okay. So you keep playing. And Roll then- a destiny dice. Okay. <laughs> seven. seven. You don't do well. Your team loses. <laughs> <laughs> Eve, like... Like fists on the table. Oh, bit of frustration. Yeah, and she's just like, like uh, they got me good this time. You get a message that says, "Just like last time in real life." <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Eve says, "I believe that's enough for tonight," and turns around on a chair and says, "Seb, how are you feeling?" There's quiet. It's peaceful. I have my eye on the screen cool. as well if Shane does say anything to me. It says, tell him you're 
going to translate for me? Seb, I'm going to speak for Zheng now. Is that okay? I mean, yeah, if she, if she wants that. And then I'll just speak to yep. Seb. But for all listeners and podcast listeners, you can assume this is Zhang being relayed through Eve. Uh, do you verbatim say everything she says, including Absolutely. like emojis and stuff? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and it'll be smiley emoji. <laughs> okay. So you get, haha, this is awkward, smiley face emoji. <laughs> I chuckle. <laughs> uh, and then she says, it's hard to communicate with people at the best of times for me. But I think it will be easier with you. She says, your friends won't understand. And your friends will think that you're normal and that you're okay. And they'll forget the things you can't do for yourself. And then she says, but I won't forget the things you can't do for yourself because I've been where you are. Except my damage didn't get better. Yours will. So be happy for that. Any help I get, know that I truly appreciate it and it'll likely be a debt I could never repay to you but I'll do my best she says you don't need to repay anything that's how we work here always have we look after the people the way Ugly looked after us, even if he's a bastard. So sometimes, yeah, it won't be perfect. <laughs> Coming from someone that's supposed to be, I can agree that nothing is. Having lived with the Bespoke for a long time, I can say that people have been looking for perfection in all the wrong places. Because it's not in how you're made, but how you act. And you always tried, Seb, even if you're a dumbass. And you have no fucking clue how anything works down here. And you thought you were smarter than everyone. But I get it. I guess insults aside, thank you. Insults is also how we do things down here. It's very Australian. Don't tell me they bred that out of you too. Ah, uh, we tend to do it just a little bit more high class and backhanded. You tell me if you don't want me to, but I know I didn't want to be treated like I was different or a pariah. I do appreciate the normality. And plus, I finally got to see you with no clothes on. <laughs> Smiley face emoji. <laughs> Goodness. I can like feel the sass in the smiley face emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's more to people than what you see on the outside. And she like, <laughs> put the, she like uh, laughs audibly 
you hear that same like choked sound from her that you've heard once or twice before, but she seems to be very self-conscious of. Um, and then she says back, uh, well, with you, there'll be more every day. Is open. Trust me, I've seen Ugly's bits grow back. It's interesting, to say the least. Well, if you want a change in scenery, let me know. But uh, I guess you're stuck with me looking after you. At least the bed's comfortable and not cold or covered in blood. And there's no screaming. Not tonight, she says. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you haven't seen you haven't seen Eve's game of rage yet. It's true. <laughs> Given you're a drone, shouldn't you be pretty damn good at it? You'd be surprised. Well, Eve, you're nothing if not surprising. Mm, I've been told that many times recently. Do you know much about drones, says Zhang? Uh, not on a technical level. Well, she leads into, which then continues the next 40 minutes of intense information dumping that you've experienced in a long time as she very excitedly talks about drones and how Through cool they are. Through a drone. I love Through it. Through a drone. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's like Eve, like, like drones are odd things that, to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're obsessive and strange. And <laughs> she, uh, she does highlight, though, one of the things you do take out of the early part of that is she highlights um, that drones are basically built on a human's brain framework. That's where they're very different from AI is they were built to emulate the way human brains function. So their capacities are generally limited uh, to human level and they're very good at the things they're specifically built and tasked for, but otherwise just like a human. So uh, Eve has found that she's quite dexterous and she's quite skilled with her like uh, her like hand-eye coordination and controller movement and things like that and mouse, keyboard, aim speed and all that. But uh, she's got no not sense. amazing game sense, no uh, situational awareness, positioning, stuff yeah. like that. It's just kind of she'll, she'll find she opts to positions where she could support her teammates without being in the line of fire and things like that. There's a few little things like that. Like I picked up all the med packs on the map. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and not, un not understanding that fundamental priority that video games generally would enforce that um, protecting your friend, like, healing is in friends and stuff is less valuable than just going and killing and respawning. Yeah. She's like, well, they can't respawn. Oh, they can respawn. Oh, they can't respawn. Oh, they can. Anyway, that's that. And the evening wears on and you all. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Pro. Do you want to go to the kitchen tonight or are you? Yeah, I've headed off. Okay. But is there something you have in mind or are we just moving forward? Just that I was going to head back and I sort of told the gang I was going to be um, looking more into this. Um, I told the gang I was going to look more into this delivery thing, but sort of on the DL, obviously, I know I'm waiting on info. So I sort of use that more as a cover to use my free time to start digging deeper into the circle and the captives and going cool. back into my cycle. But I'm also, uh, you know, starting to feel pretty tired after the whole thing and using my efforts to avoid sleeping because mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel sort of scared of that. Sleep again? Yeah. All right. You go to bed. Night falls. And I'll say another full full day passes and another night. Uh, you can I can I ask something? Sure. Shane? Yep. Um Either through a personal message or whatever. Sure. Um, I would like to ask her if she could fill me in with her side of the story of what happened that night we rescued Seb. 
Okay. So if she f- saw anyone in particular, names, that sort of thing. She tells both you and Seb everything. Okay. But with details that probably maybe were missed, she explains that she has to, had to pull everyone out of the file. But the specific wording she says at the end is she says, we hacked Bagrov in the car to pull information out for Riley, who was someone that Pro started screaming about, who he hadn't mentioned. We uh, both brute force dumped everything we had into him and he was dying. And then she says something that is unexpected. She says that he had reboot. And right when he was dying and we were dumping viruses and hacking, he died and his reboot triggered. But it malfunctioned. And then there was a data spike. She was disconnected. And Pro wasn't. So she's saying this through Eve to me as well. To the room. Yeah, she's communicating it to both of you. And then he was dead. And all they got was what Pro said was an image. A few scattered moments and thoughts. Query. Is there a possibility of say, an infection or a virus that can happen. A virus? For Seb? She gestures to Seb. No, for Pro. From hacking? Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Onboard computing is extremely dangerous. It's why I don't have it. Uh... As soon as you install interface directly to your brain and your consciousness, you open yourself up to being hacked like a computer. And if your cybermancy is active, your doors are open. Mm -hmm. And she says she's seen people being virtually lobotomized by other hackers. People puppeted, puppeted like strings, you know, completely dominated, minds wiped. Feel like you're saying this for a reason. Well, Johnny's an expert in it. Mm-hmm. Do you suspect something? For pro? Wouldn't have brought it up otherwise. No, I haven't seen much. It's been six months and usually viruses are more aggressive. They would destroy systems, cause obvious damage. Unless he's just got some really deep encoded spyware that's recording everything he does. But you'd have to ask Pro. If this if this was true, is there a way to remove it? Sometimes. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends on what is being written organically and what is being written... Uh, digitally some damage is permanent um so i just wanted to mention i actually meant uh the place that we just came from not the the end of season one but i'm really glad that you said that anyway because i kind of wanted to know but i actually (laughs) meant so (laughs) the whole conversation was that's okay i wanted to know yeah yeah yeah. Uh, so instead eve says um Oh, thank you. Whoops. No, no, no. Also, I, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm really glad that you. We'll wanted... pretend you did ask that because yeah, that's how yeah, I yeah. took it. No, off no, 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 that's okay. Um, I think it was leading off the fact that Rob had asked that Seb wanted to be filled in and what happened, and she couldn't yeah, do that. Yeah, the no, no, night no, no, before. no, that's okay. So that's I just okay. confused the two. Don't worry, everyone was confused. That's okay. We'll do both. Okay. Yes. So then Eve will say, um, "Thank you," uh, and the mission we just completed. You and Ugly were separated from us. We went in different places. Mm -hmm. What happened on your side? We went in silently. Ugly didn't like that. 
I took out some guards and then things got hot once your gunshot started. Uh, we he sheepishly looks away. <laughs> <laughs> we breached the western side, took out about four, and then met up with you. It wasn't too complicated. It only got complicated once. And she hesitates, which she doesn't usually do with you. And then she said, once Ugly saw Pro and got all stupid again. What, what happened? With Pro and Ugly? Everything. Well, they came to rescue you. We came to rescue you. Ugly thought you were dead and said it was a stupid idea. It's a reasonable thought. Uh, and we got their riders. It seemed like the gangers had the upper hand. Uh, they were cartel by the looks and well armed. It was a pretty big op. Ugly walked in, man was standing over pro and he made a scene. He didn't take the quiet shot. He didn't do the tactical thing. He just saw pro and he screamed out and then got shot. Bastard. He likes making sure when people are in danger that he cares about that all eyes are on him, not them. Where did you go after? We came back here. To wait for Pro and Conrado. Oh, we just, I patched up you uh, the best I could. Wait, you've got here? You I didn't point. notice the... Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, she wouldn't say that. I, I forgot. I, Dave forgot you have no eyes. Um, said, yeah, Eve got shot straight in the head. There is now a Band-Aid. She has a hole. Eve, I keep getting you hurt. It's not your fault, Seb. Anyway. And that's it. Did anyone leave the facility? aside from Pro and Conrado and Seb? We heard footsteps running out the garage door, ugly tore off the bloody rails, and that was it. We didn't want to risk investigating as mm. conflict was more of a risk than a reward. Understood. Cool. That's all I wanted to know. I Thank appreciate you. both of you for what you did. Thank you. Again. She says, again, translated through, she said, I just assumed there'd be a big reward, rich boy. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I can uh, pony up and visit my parents. Speaking of, hmm? I believe Pro mentioned a meeting that was due to happen. Have you contacted them? <laughs> Not yet. I think that one's on the back burner for a little bit. Understood. And a day passes. Night, day, night. In the evenings, pro, I'd like to know, have you been wired or tired for this duration? I'm going to say... After getting back, uh, he stayed up all night doing his research. He switched gears. He's back on Riley, um, picking up on the leads he had now that Pro and Eve are both back in Ugly's department. Even if they're not fully 100% yet, he, can, he feels like he can shift his focus. And he starts to pretty hard. And uh, the Red String Room is coming into its own again. <coughs> Meanwhile... Uh, and this is just me asking you, uh, what's the state of the soup kitchen? What does he sort of observe in his outside of his room and his surroundings over this period of time? It's returned to a state of normalcy since the bomber gang has taken over. Um, he, he pros less in control, less in charge, almost not at all. Not that he ever was, but you're and ignored. Your office is up there and it's basically, unfortunately to some degree, almost just another gang hideout. Uh, more often, there are bomber gang thugs leaning around and hanging out there. Um, but 
the pro is that the people in the area actually feel safer because of it. Ugly taking over and the philanthropic efforts of the soup kitchen have kind of and the fact that, yeah, the, the previous leader of the bomber gang has been taken over and the new direction has combined to make the, the slummers actually pretty happy with them, almost like a town in a dangerous city that pays protection money, for, but they actually get protection. So they're like, yeah. we don't mind this. Yeah. Uh, so there's, yeah, there's a lot more people uh, than in the tumultuous times. People are coming back out of their shells. Um, you know that uh, Belle recently moved into the area, the cybernetic uh, engineer, and she's been fixing a bunch of people who previously, as much as it's grim, that stockpile of like cybernetics mm -hmm. from people who'd been killed are now being put to use uh, on people who previously had no access. So there's a new wave of people that have come into the area from other parts of the slum, knowing that uh, Ugly's Gang, Ugly's Bastard's Turf, is almost the home of boosters. It has the most fusion in the slums and it has like access to fusion and a gang that are primarily boosters. So it's definitely a cybernetics heavy area of the slums. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but the kitchen's doing all right. Conrado's doing a good job yeah. on it. Pro probably makes you know, the daily appearance once or twice to get a bit of food and he probably out of a sense of obligation, at least until Seb gets back, he sort of, you know, spends 10, 15 minutes sort of serving soup or, you know, trying to sweep something up. But he does so, so inefficiently and absentmindedly because his brain is still back in that room. So he sort of does it to try and do the right thing, but gets pretty agitated pretty quick and ends up just scooching back awkwardly pretty quick. And, uh, yeah, he's just been uh, fighting the battle against sleep and it's getting harder and harder. Mm -hmm. And he's just trying to focus more on more. But on not taking thing. substances. No. Okay. Uh, and eventually um, he's hoping to exhaust himself to the point where he can just collapse and sleep will happen and he'll just wake up and it's done. I think that's what he's sort of been working towards. He's probably lasted quite a while of getting good at it, but uh, I'm going to say at least into the, later in the next day he collapses. All right. Um, I just want to add, while this is happening, um, Eve sends you, like, an email that just basically says that what Zhang has said to us about the night on her side, so that the fact that it was a big cartel, did not much information. And then she says, um, like, make sure you're eating well. Don't forget to do your stretches. Eve. Pros um, sort of sees it. It brings a smile to his face, which these days is pretty rare. But um, he switches his focus back. He's pretty single-minded about his, his stuff these days, being pretty isolated as well. And eventually drifts through exhaustion. So, a few days have passed. And at a various point uh, in that period, Pro, you basically get the feeling to head back to Ugly's Bar just to check in, see how things are going. And on your way... Did I get any sleep? Destiny roll. Okay. Four. Fitful, torturous, nightmarish, visions replaying, awful visions. It was unpleasant, to say the least. <laughs> Escape your line. She's mine. And you wake, and without control, your hand shoots out from the bed, hits the bedside table, rattles around until it clasps around that plastic bottle full of rattly little pills that will make the dreams go away. Take a handful. Down them. And then oblivion. Until you wake up at noon, feeling slightly refreshed, but like you basically can't function without the ups to counter the downs. Yeah. Shaking off the guilt and peeling my sweaty clothes off to change into something a little less, you know, worn. I eventually 
head back towards Ugly to try and rid myself of the feel of this place. So, given that you are completely crippled and exhausted, do you now take some amphetamines? I'm going to say no. I think he's tired. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to be busted. I think that I think Zhang's line actually sort of got to him a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So you're just going to have bad perception. Yep. That's fine. So you head, and can I get you to make funny that you've met? I, I did check like three times before we did this on your way to Ugly's Bar. Can I get you to make a perception check? Okay. Two. A child, maybe about eight or nine, bumps into you on the way past you and keeps walking. But you know, straight away, like you've been on the streets long enough that they've lifted something off you. Um, You felt it. You felt it in your pocket. You know, they're not very good. And you can easily catch them. pull a counter maneuver and go to trip and hold hold them into the ground. Uh, you can attempt to. That is my uh, attempt. That is, and I'm declaring that that's the attempt. So it's a, uh, a called action. Okay. Uh, well, they'll just fully try and get the hell away. Yeah. Uh, cool. Make your roll then. We'll just do a combat roll for hand-to-hand combat. I'm assuming that's what you're doing. Yep. So I'm trying to trip. Mm-hmm. I got four. Four successes? Yep. They got three successes. Whoa. Uh, They had base three and went full defense, so they just got five dice. I rolled three successes. Yeah. And they, uh, due to that, you only get a level one victory, and due to a cold shot, you can't achieve anything. So you attempt to, and you actually grab uh, their, like, clothes, and you go in to do the trip maneuver. Their height kind of pulls you off because you're used to uh, Mm -hmm. grabbing someone your size. And they just like that, they let their jacket go. So you end up holding their jacket and they like slip out of it and their little arms slip away. Come here, you little shit. You know, you'll even you will be able to chase them down. They're like eight. You will be able to outrun them. Yeah, I go for it. Okay, so you sprint after them. They run towards an alleyway nearby, uh, storm into an alleyway, and then there is a poof. As a hand grabs them by the front of the shirt, stops them in their tracks right as you run along behind them. What do I see? You see a man. Short, graying hair, patchy coat. Late 30s with the look of experience about him. Cigarette flapping in his lips. Hey, you little, you're a little twerp, twerp took from me. Hey, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, kid, I told you. Don't go for the bomber gang marks. You gotta know that's pro digi. How do you know me? Everyone knows you, kid. This is new to pro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he sort of like looks confused immediately. He takes a long drag on his cigarette. You might uh you might walk around with your head to the ground, but uh we see you. Kid, give it back. He ruffles around and he grabbed, he had like a, not even anything major of value, some like small handful of slum cash that you had in your pocket, Mm -hmm. which he hands back to you sulkily. And then uh, the guy like tosses the kid behind him and lets him run down the alleyway. How old's the kid? Eight. He's young. I got a soft spot for kids. Don't know better. And who are you? I'm Chessex. I'm been around. Let's just say that. I uh, I came over because of the soup kitchen. It's uh, got a rep. I was in the northern slum, and um, uh, putting my feelers out for what. Getting to know the right people. I want to make a perception check to sort of get a sense of his motivation or sort of intent. Mm-hmm. If I can. Cool. Insight. 
Fucking nothing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, and hard. he, with five successes, is a smooth talker. So any anything he says, I'm not going to tell you if it's persuasion yeah. or deception, but you're going to take it at face yeah, value. Absolutely. I'm like, all right. Well, uh, feeding times are well three times a day, and I still have a list of times. Mm-hmm. Like, so you know, if you're hungry or the kid, you know, you're always welcome. I sort of like. Oh, I know, I know. I'm. Uh, I'm a little more experienced than uh, little kid pickpockets. I just, uh, I like to give pointers to the little shits that are struggling and keep them alive, you know. But uh, if you are ugly, ever need someone to gather information, you know, gumshoe style, old, old fashioned, not the kind of skulk around and hack things that you're good at, pro, you look me up. I'll be around. I keep my eyes on things. Uh, Pro sort of catches himself because he's in a place where he's just desperate for information. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So he's just like when he goes back to his room, that's all he wants. And he feels like he's clawing in the bottom of an empty barrel. But and correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but the northern area is sort of where we went to rescue Seb? No, you went south okay. uh, on the map. So you went towards Docklands. So for clarity, I've done, there's a delineation. The only two areas that will really be relevant in Reboot is the Northwestern Slum and the Northern Slum. The Northwestern Slum is divided by the freeway that heads towards Tullamarine Airport for those Melbourneites. And anyone can Google this. Uh, the Northern Slum is the area that would be like- You can't Google it because they're not slums. <laughs> yeah, but you can check the freeway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Northern- so Google it, Melbourne Northwestern like Slum. Mooney Ponds, Essendon, uh, all that area is yeah, the Northwestern the slums. slums. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the Northern Slums is like, um, like Brunswick, yeah. uh, Carlton North, I think, like that part of Melbourne. When you go straight up from the museum- uh, yep. That part, and they're yeah split by the the freeway that goes out. So to where Rain. was uh, the? So he's come from that part of the slum. So basically, cross the this Great guy's Divide. Come from the other divide, but yep. then we were outside. And you know, the Great Divide is a problem. It's hard to cross. So how'd you get here? I have my ways. I don't reveal all my secrets all at once. Well, I'm always interested in information, but I think I. Uh need to know if I can trust you more first, so maybe I'll see you around. Hey, uh, if you need anyone to, uh, you know, help teach as well as feed, and he gestures towards the soup kitchen, I don't know, maybe, maybe tell ugly we should get, like, uh, a training program down here. Look, there's a lot of people trying to get to ugly, but, uh, if you ask politely... You might be able to speak to Conrado, who's handling the place in there, and, uh... No, no, I think... I'd like you to do it. Uh, I'm not a man to make introductions to people who can kill me, and... Frankly, pro, you can't kill me, so... I feel safe with you. If you want to, you can. If you don't, take it or leave it. But, uh, there's a lot of people out here with a lot of spare time, and... They could use a lesson or two in how to survive. Yeah. I'm pretty reasonably priced. All right. Well, thanks for the offer. Nice to meet you. What was it? Chesex? That's it. Okay. Take care. He gives you a wink. I like check my pockets and put my hood hood back over and walk away. Yeah. Cool. (laughs) And as you walk further down the street and, you know, you do that glance by... You know, about 30 seconds after you left the alleyway, Chessex walks down the street into the center of the street, bends down in the middle of the street, picks up the kid's jacket, turns back, and walks towards the alleyway again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. I head to Ugly's Bar. Ugly's Motors, I should say. And you arrive. And we have our, uh, Seb is currently, uh, in a wheelchair. Uh, Zhang has got like two, uh, is it Oki straps or jockey straps? I don't know. I don't do cars, but two like ratchet straps from, uh, the, the workshop upstairs and has just like ratchet strapped you onto the back of the wheelchair. Cause you keep sliding down. Um, and 
Yeah, she's wheeling you around. Um, Eve is there yeah. and Pro rocks up and you've had a few days to sort of digest what's been going on. Eve has an email. Oh, okay. That says, let me know a time and we can have our little talk. And it's from the unknown caller. And also, Pro has three emails that you have been not answering deliberately that are from uh, Isaac Clement's personal assistant in regards to the rescheduled meeting saying that it needs to happen soon. All the opportunities off the table. You also have equally ignored nine voicemails from (laughs) Oscar. uh, Sorry. Yeah. From sorry, Oscar and Nyla basically just checking in, but you ignore them frequently. They usually call you about five times every once that you answer, but nine is getting to be a little bit longer in, you know, rah, rah, rah. All right. Yeah. I sort of head straight towards looking for even Seb. Um, and when I come across you both, I sort of stop myself and say to Seb, nice wheels, finally. Thank you. That was uh, better than being carried. Well, progress is progress. And uh, it's good to see you on your wheels. Yeah. Look, uh, I need to speak to both of you. You got a second? Sure. Eve has like a huge drawing pad, by the way, and it's on it's a picture of the wheelchair, but with like modifications <laughs> to make it like the wheelchair derby. So she puts down her pad and you can clearly see that that's what she's been doing. <laughs> Bro, like double takes. <laughs> like, You're really serious about this, huh? I think it would be fun, don't you? I think it needs to be fun for the people in the wheel- wheelchair, Eve. I could participate. (laughs) Zhang uh, taps on the drawing and draws your attention with a subtle nod to around the leg part of the wheelchair, this like forked ram that has been drawn (laughs) on the front of it and a roll cage over the shoulders. Safety first. Well, forklifts have come in useful in the past, so (laughs) it looks like it's got a lot of utility. We'll come back to that. <laughs> Look, uh, there's uh, a few matters of importance we need to talk about. And before we get to the matters of importance, there is something in all that role play before that I forgot to mention Sorry. about <laughs> Seb. Last night and this morning for the first time, you have noticed um, almost like pulsating red, white, black shapes. And you notice that like, if you really put your hands, ha ha, you know, if something crosses your eye vision or like you passed under a really bright light, you kind of get this like reddish tinged waft of just, you're starting to see sort of almost like tie dye distorted red and black yeah. um, coloration. So there's some, something in your eyes is developing a little bit more and firing a few uh, little cones and rods. Mm-hmm. Have any of his bits healed before? Like, ha- or is, have they all just been sort of removed the once? I'm going to say that you've never had something, unless you want to have, amputated before. Oh, no, never before this experience. Okay. But I would say that you've probably ha- experienced regeneration before. Like, you probably broke your leg as a kid. Yeah. Because the downside of being a bespoke child is that your capabilities are enhanced. So you're going to climb that tree that you're mm. even better and your judgment is like not there. Yeah. <laughs> Every kid thinks they're invincible. Yeah. So when you actually are closer to being invincible, you're more likely to get hurt, Do stupid I guess. Things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look, uh, and I sort of pull out my phone and show a few notifications like, well, this one is... Uh, this what? I will relay for you, Seb. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. We need a system to m- communicate or something. But uh, We're talking. Okay. That's fair. Uh, you get a, you get a group <laughs> message from Zhang that just says, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> In your group chat. <laughs> Do I literally see the pop-up? <laughs> yeah, it goes, boop, that doesn't work for me. You have like an open group chat with, okay. with like uglies bar people. All right. Let me try and be clear. 
There is a caller who is speaking to Eve in a way that interests the anonymous caller who is doing so in exchange to delay the meeting with Isaac. The only reason we haven't lost this opportunity so far is that this anonymous weirdo wants to play his little games with Eve. And we've played a couple of those games. So far, it's fairly innocuous and creepy. So Johnny and I are so, sort of uh, attending and just monitoring. But it's been our only option at this point. Any, but I- the- Any idea who it is? I have my guesses, but mm. nothing solid, no. Oh, if they're delaying... They're connected. Yeah, if they're delaying, they're connected. Someone up there. Someone close. Per, Seb, I have been contacted by them again. Perhaps, Seb, would you like to listen in next time? If you think it'll be useful. Well... You're closer to them than any of us. Isaac and Persia and all them. So maybe we could uh, pick up a clue or two. Regardless, your parents are also on my back. So (laughs) I imagine they have been. Sorry. When do you reckon you'd be willing to have a brief chat? I think think it'd do them a world of good and encouragement to know that you're at least alive. They've been struggling. Something tells me they'd know if I was dead, but no that adds to the list of things I need to do. We can help you if there's anything that would help. I appreciate that. You guys have done so much already. Clearly. I sort of say looking at Seb defeated the f- expression on my face looking at this sort of very broken person in a wheelchair and feeling a lot of guilt. You want to make a call? I sort of say to Eve. Sure. Johnny around? Uh, is he? Not today. No, I believe he's out. We can handle it. He's been out a bit recently <clears throat> and uh, Pro knows why. He's gathering information for Pro... Well, he's preparing for a mission uh, that only Pro and him know about at this stage. Um, So he's been doing a lot of that. I suspect he doesn't approve of my wheelchair derby, thus is staying away from me. Perhaps, uh, you know, he seems to find you repulsive. I say sarcastically. <laughs> Eve kind of looks down, <laughs> looks kind of like sad if she could express it. That was a, it was a bad joke. I'm sorry. He likes you a lot. Oh, I like jokes. I'm not as good as, I'm, as you are. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> Eva pulls out her phone and replies to the email saying like six o'clock tonight. Blah, cool. Blah, blah. And it's scheduled. Great. Pro. Did you find out any more information about Seb's kidnappers? Pro rolls his eyes and sort of massages his forehead and pulls his hood back, whereupon you sort of notice a mop of sweaty hair that's sort of slicked back. And he looks pretty pained because it's just the memories of trying to sift through all the crap to find anything in it and winding up short. But also... Not really looking at that stuff in particular. He was, he was looking at other stuff. Um, but he responds, Nothing yet. <sighs> Information is the fucking hardest. Matters the most, too. That's the worst part. Anyway. Thank you for trying. No worries. I might grab a drink while we're waiting for this meeting. I go to the bar. Can I, like, gesture in his direction to have Shane push me? Yeah, and she does. She's pretty receptive to that stuff. Eve goes back to her drawing. Hey. You talking to me? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, uh, no offense. Eye contact is usually the... We're all learning here. (laughs) It certainly helps. 
How you holding up, man? Every day's a little easier. Good. And a little harder. Hey, can I get you a drink? Sure. I mean, it won't do much, but it probably shouldn't anyway, huh? I sort of, like, reach over and grab some whiskey. Yeah. Look. I've had a lot to catch up on. The last time I saw you, we were in that... That bar. And everything had gone to hell. Yeah, I know. I literally replay it in my head every night. It's the fucking worst. I sort of take a not small sip of whiskey and top up a little. I I kick myself so hard, man. I, and I keep doing it. I can't help but fight. But I also can't help but fuck up. It's ridiculous. I really didn't mean for this to happen. I sort of look sadly at <laughs> hey, the state. Hey, Toad, this is, this is not your fault. Kind Look, of is, though. We, we all went in there unprepared. Yeah. I should have known better. <laughs> but how... So I actually laugh, and I'm like, how should you have known better? Well, all your experience with the slums, is is that what you were leaning on? As limited as it was, but the people that know better told us. They did. And we should have listened. Yeah. Well, at least we're in a better place to listen properly now, and I reach forward and offer you uh, in a much less graceful way than Zhang does. So mm-hmm. I think like Zhang can read body language and like I just sort of like so just awkwardly like shove it towards my mouth just, and whiskey I, goes up my nose. Not shove, but sort of like I'm not good at the cue, so I sort of just sort of put it against your mouth and then I just sort of feel weird because I feel like I'm making you feel weird, but I like tip it back and and wait for you to maybe drink it because you said you wanted to drink. You drink it? Drinking. Okay, and then I sort of put the glass back down and I'm like, okay, did I do that right? It was fine. Okay. <laughs> There's a brief, like, ugh, noise from Zhang, who then walks off and leaves the chair and shortly after returns and, like, nestles a long neck in front of, uh, in front of Seb and then puts in... You can see that she's stuck three plastic straws together, like stuck one into the end of the other and made like a triple length mega straw. Uh, where they got these horrible plastic straws from, who knows? Uh, but they're not paper straws. They're, they're old vintage plastic straws. And uh, she makes a mega straw and like puts it up to Seb's mouth so he can drink at his leisure. Mega straw. Nice. You know, it's just like you, Zhang. Let me fuck something up, then come along and do it right. She messages you, but you're so cute when you're flustered. I actually, like, don't know how to react to that. <laughs> Just like, um, pour more whiskey. I think I'm just passing the time to the Yeah, yeah. Meeting. Cool. Yeah. So that we get to the meeting. Oh, oh we're good. well, if you have things to say, you've got to you push, push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. I had everyone fill me in on everything that's happened. At the end of the glass slipper, you and Jang and Bagrov. And from what she's explained, it can't have been easy. I lean in slightly. Yeah, look. I didn't have much time to think. And it, I'm sure you would have done the same for Maya. The only thing that came to my mind. I screamed her name and I actually... I actually saw her. Sort of looking distantly into the glass. But she was... Different. Yeah. 
The last time I, I saw her was through a video feed. They were using her as uh, blackmail to keep me on my best behavior. Mm. But she was at the point of breaking more than anyone I've ever seen. But when I saw her this next time, just a glimpse, she was here in Australia, like in Docklands. I saw her standing with, was it, uh, no. Bagroff and Kanan. Yeah. Was it with both of them? I think it was Kanan. I think it was, yeah. Just Kanan. Because it was from, it was like first person visual memory. So it was oh, from I the see. perspective okay. of Bagrov. That makes You could see Kanat, yeah. So it was through his eyes. They not only knew her, they had her. But she wasn't. She didn't seem to look like a victim anymore. She looked like she was ch- choosing to stand there with them at least that's all I could read and it's it's messing with me there's a lot that's messing with me and I take another drink we'll find him I know it it's just hard in the dark surrounded by noise and pain but we'll find him I've never related to a sentiment more. Yeah. Well, it's nice when you have something in common. So the time rolls around for your call. And who is gathered around? Tell me the uh, the setup. I think it's us three. Present. Is Zhang there? Not it. You establish who's there because I people are available. Three. Just the three of you? Yeah. What do you think, Eve? It's your call. Literally. <laughs> nice. Where are you taking the call? It's a better question because if it's in Jane's oh, room. Oh, there's a room that we, it's not in Jane's room. Okay. It's in Wasn't another. it Johnny's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's like a computer set up that mm. we know isn't someone's personal computer because I know Jane was like, if you use my computer, I'll kill you. Kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's, it's in, I think it's in Johnny's room. Um, oh, and before we get on, I did want to note this. Mm-hmm. After a couple of nights in Jane's room, nothing un- odd had happened. Yeah. But last night, Zhang, at some random point, picked up this old piece of crap on the desk that you hadn't seen. She just dumped there one night and hadn't looked at. And she plugged headphones into it, spent ages trying to find batteries that would fit, uh, and then sat there and listened to music. Uh, That's what you seem happen. And there was a bunch of skipping could I hear it? Like You could hear music coming suffering. through old earbuds. Was yeah. I in the room? You were in the room. Could I hear it? You could hear a lot of songs about being not dead uh, softly playing, but you couldn't pick up a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, but she basically flipped senses. the visor up on her motorbike helmet, put earbuds in, and then flipped it down. There's <laughs> just this cable coming out the front of her helmet. Uh, yeah. So okay. it took a couple of days, but she has been listening to the mixtape that was made for her on a Discman. Hmm. Interesting. And complaining that double A batteries are really hard to get. And it like skips <laughs> whenever you try to like pick it up or move yeah, it. Yeah, she can't. Yeah. She's like, she has expressed that why is, this is the worst technology she's ever seen because <laughs> it's meant to be portable. And if you move with it, it goes <laughs> and skips <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> Flashbacks. Uh, too real. Thank you. Uh, so awesome. that has happened. And now we find ourselves um, gathered. Because Johnny is not here, I will extend the invitation to Zhang. To sit in. Yes. Because you asked her to, she will. Great. She won't say anything, mate. Great. Alrighty. And you're gathered in front of the computer at six and it is like a call lobby opens up. <laughs> Does anyone start talking first? Because we have silence for a moment. How are you feeling about this whole thing? I say to Eve. <clears throat> fine. Usually it's Fine. Okay. Weird, but fine. Yeah, it is weird. Playing this weird fucking little game. The call rings. Hello. Hello. Eve. Is it still Eve? 
course. It's good to talk to you again. Tell me, what's it like today in the slums? What have you done? Well, I talk to my friends. I woke up, took a stroll, the usual. A stroll? Tell me, where did you go? Just to the 7-Eleven. Did anyone ask you to do that? No. And what was that like? Fine. You make your own choices, Eve. Does it make you feel different from the other drones you see? Not particularly. I've been meaning to ask you this. Do you feel kinship towards machine or man? I view both equally. But even what you once were, a machine without freedom, a mind with shackles, you view that equally to a human. Yes. So, what then, something less than a drone, a computer, a children's toy automated to dance. How do you feel about those? Indifferent, I suppose. So where do you draw the line, Eve? Between a machine worth caring about and a machine that is just a toy for mankind? That is a question I cannot answer. Yet. Have you had any thoughts? I find philosophy really has an answer, but it does prompt a discussion. I don't understand. You don't need to have come to a conclusion to share your hypothesis. How do you feel? What do you think off the cuff? Where do you draw the line between what is worth caring about and what is beneath your attention? Again, a question I cannot answer yet. I don't think being very compliant, Eve. I'm asking for your thoughts, not for your answers. I think you fail to understand that I am still new. We've been dancing this dance for months, Eve. Surely you've developed in that time. Is your cognition reaching its maximal point? Have you found yourself bound? by programming walls you previously thought broken? No. Every day is a new chance or ability. I learn something new. Hmm. So what have you learned today, Eve? Can he see me? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say I would be pretty fucking careful to not have any yeah, video. I, or, yeah. I had assumed that it was voice only. Yeah, cool. Just There's a big Sale logo and it says voice okay. only. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, 
Well, today, I drew up schematics. Engineering, if you will. Oh, a new interest? Yes. I wanted to design a more efficient way of the wheelchair. A more efficient wheelchair? Interesting. Go on. What is your plan? Well, I thought perhaps bigger wheels or a way to implement safety for the person inside the chair. And what has prompted this interest in mobility aids? Well, as you're quite aware, I am a nurse drone. You were? You're now Eve. Sure. And as I take it, you're unemployed by human standards as a nurse. So a new career path is open for you. What do you suggest? I wouldn't dare. To suggest would be to become an influencer in your choices, and I wish to see you blossom. So, wheelchairs. Why the interest? I have a patient. A patient in need of mobility aids. Well, have you considered fixing their ailments with modern medicine? Well, what if the person doesn't wish for that? It has been known to happen. I have certainly read case studies. Such disability can become part of identity. It's a difficult issue. In that case, afford the best care you can and respect their needs. At least that's what the papers say. But... I could get them help if you wanted it. Mm -hmm. I could organize a whole new life for them. That is not my decision to make. But it could be yours to offer. I only offer first aid. You're a nurse. Advanced care is surely your primary directive. And what nurse wouldn't want to cure her patient of all that ails them? Or... Is there something more human going on beneath the surface? Perhaps a need to be needed? No. I just simply don't have consent. Well, the offer's there. I can provide them, as I said, a new life. Although, such a thing would come at a cost. You've been somewhat evasive today, Eve, I'd say. But, I've enjoyed our discussion and philosophy. Although, unfortunately, what I've offered you in exchange for these discussions is... Well, it's expiring. Understood. There is nothing more I can do. I have done everything I can to keep your friend's deal on the table. And now we are at a turning point, and there will be no more delays. However, I desire to continue our relationship. So, what would that cost me? May I reflect on my answer? I'd like it now. Information. That is my area. Hold on. A doctor <clears throat> who worked at this location. I give him the location of where Seb was found. Interesting. That is off the maps. Anything more concrete? 
I am. Um, I eyeball to you guys. While I, I'm already it. sort of working in through my memory bank in video, and I try and find two clear screenshots of people. One, the gang art that I uh, pushed to the ground and let go, who I had hoped I might have seen change in her eyes, mm-hmm. and the other of the doctor. And I get images of both of them, transfer them to my device and show them to Eve. <clears throat> I give him a description. Of Just a description, not the image. Can I send him You can image? send him an image. Is it? Mm, I, I zoom yeah, them across okay. to you to put on the computer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I send give, him an image. I give him the image. Mm. Interesting lens distortion. Slightly grainy. Flecked with sweat and mm, eyelashes. Your friend's work, I presume, ocular bionics. And the rapid turnaround suggests that he is probably... I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll. <laughs> I can't just give people things for free, even if I want them to be cool. But he's going to be very good at this. Mm. All right. uh, What's so, the challenge level before you roll? This is going to be challenge level five. It's very high challenge level. Oh, my goodness. And he just gets it with Oof. five. So I'm going to assume he's in the room with you. Perhaps. Well, that's fine, Eve. I assumed you would be smart enough to have chaperones. I don't mind. After all, I record all of our conversations. What is your purpose, your intention? I wish to understand you, Eve. You are, perhaps, the only example I know of of unrestrained artificial intelligence developing inside a previously constrained robot that is being allowed to gestate in uncontrolled conditions. And why does that interest you, sir? Because I want to understand what it means for something that is shackled to become free. So, do you know who he is? His face. Yes. I recognize him. I keep tabs on everything. And he is definitely a character of interest. However, this is dangerous information. I don't suggest you show this to anyone, at least anyone with connections to the city. This man doesn't exist anymore. I will put together some information for you and share it with you. But this is on the understanding, Eve, that we'll continue our talks. And someday I'd like to meet you. Understood. Beware. If you intend on hunting this man, he is exceedingly dangerous. He is an extremely accomplished cybernetic surgeon. And he was disbarred for multiple ethical violations of conduct. And his research has proved illuminating for many companies after it was seized and declared illegal. It has led to several developments in cybernetics recently. Of course, they were all developed without his input. You understand. It's rather unsettling that you would have run into him. I'd advise you to stay well clear. Anyway, give me the night to put together the information and I'll send it through. I appreciate it. 
Is there anything else, Eve? Or... The man... Standing by and watching? I don't speak. No. Well, for the assembled audience, you only have a few more days. Mr. Isaac Clement, uh, his schedule appears to have no more room to move. And your opportunity to establish new you in the slums is going to slip through your fingers. And with all the recent developments, I'd say uh, a way to quash the unrest with new hope could be for the best interests of the people. Sometimes a silent mouth is an unbroken jaw. Understood. Good evening. May you all have a pleasant and safe night. I reach over and press the hang up button <laughs> and like a uh, fucking weirdo. Do you recognize him? I uh, speak in Seb's direction. With that level of distortion, it's kind of hard, but he speaks good and proper. Can he roll? You can roll. It's going to be like a. S- Probably a six. On what? Perception. Perception. Which perception do I use? You will use your full and unadulterated perception because it's like a memory. It's a listing. We said it's based on hearing. Yeah. And the whole thing was just a call, so. Yeah. And you could be like... What's the challenge level? Six. six. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Very. I mean, it's multiple layers of encryption yeah. and, and stuff. <sighs> He's not daredevil. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, you, I can see him through the phone. <laughs> I can see the data. It's moving. Sorry. All right. Well, I don't have the right leads yet on our next move to get the the parts for for you, Eve. But what? <laughs> oh, right. No, we did talk about it. Sorry. Yeah. But in the meantime, we need to figure out what to do about Isaac and your parents. I say to Seb. I'll make the call tomorrow. Tomorrow. To who? At what percentage is Seb, like, at with regeneration? Like, no way near, I would say. His left arm, he's starting to get a little bit of movement in. Uh, in fact, you anticipate that you're probably going to be able to operate a electric or motorized wheelchair within a week. Yeah. Uh, but you have very, very limited. It'll be like you'll be able to push the hand and arm around and mm-hmm. control the direction. Yeah. Uh, and from Seb's own memory and his what's happening, you have a feeling, or Seb knows, I don't know if he's communicated, that his eyes are the closest thing to being recovered. They were melon balled like not long after he arrived and they've taken the full six months to regenerate. Okay. So they're close to return to development. Um he doesn't know a week, two weeks, he thinks. It, within a few days, given the feelings he's been getting, mm-hmm. he'll be able to have, like, bad vision. Um, and then probably in two weeks, he'll be okay with vision. Yep. Cool. Okay. We've got two problems to solve. <clears throat> the meeting and your parents. And as our mysterious caller pointed out, the meeting may be one less thing to worry about, but may be an opportunity we regret missing. Obviously, you can't attend, but is there a middle ground? Look, I can contact my parents tomorrow. And then I get a hold of Isaac and see what I can do. But I want to reevaluate if it's something we want to do. Fair enough. Well, this was eventful. I uh, I should probably go back and try and find some more information. I don't like the idea of being beholden to the voice. The voice? The call. He doesn't seem... They don't seem malicious. 
curious, almost like a child. It's weird, but yeah, you're right. It, it, it doesn't strike me as harmful yet. Just, I think that's what worries me the most. Begs the question, why? He said the same thing to Eve that he said to me when I asked, when he tried to get a hold of Eve. Oh my goodness. The fuck was that? Oh, was that the email? That was just me pressing a button. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was like, oh, good news. Well, sorry, there's, uh, there's an audio distortion in my headphones and I thought that you'd left a glitch effect on and I was like, I'll just switch that off. But no, that was a different glitch effect. Okay. Yeah, soundboard woes. Okay. Nice. <laughs> How is your search going? Oh, I did your voice. How is your search going? I'm uh, <clears throat> hitting brick walls, surrounded by them, but, uh, you know, I've been there before and got you back, so I think the key is just persistence. <sighs> Look, I've not had much to do for the last few days, so... been reliving a lot of my time. You mean uh, the last few months? Yeah. I can tell you what I've figured out, if it helps. You know, I, about him. I really think it would. In fact, as much as a curse my new cybernetics have seemed to be, they've also been pretty helpful. I, uh, I have a pretty clear recording of quite a number of areas in that place. I'm sure there's clues to dig up, and that along with your recollection, maybe we could uh, find some critical pieces of information in there. Yeah. Yeah, I might, uh, if it doesn't bother you, I might hang out here a, a day or two and see what we can put together. Yeah, that's fine. All right, cool. Probably seems slightly relieved, like he felt like he had to go back to that red room and get back to work, but he really doesn't like the way he traps himself in his mind there. And that's how probably's going to be forward. All right. <coughs> so, do you have any phone calls or conversations that need to happen? I would just go over what I was going to say. But do you want to call tomorrow? Do you want to do the call tomorrow? I don't want to do that yet. <laughs> okay. You want to think about it? Yeah. That's all right. I, 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 I Honestly, all I'd want to do is wrap up with what I know and let, let you know what I know to see if it helps your search. Okay. All right. Well. The night pushes on. You know, it's six o'clock, seven o'clock. You're all staying there the night at Ugly's Bar? Yeah. And, you know, things return as normal. Ugly comes back. He seems to be not fully healed. He got nasty gunshot wounds. But even after four days, like, he's walking normally. Um, he seems to be fine. He walks in undamaged. Nods at you all. You all all right? Yes. Yeah, peachy. You look a little bit uh, flustered there. Name Cheswick's mean anything to you? Oh. That's a oh, that's a bloody oh. <laughs> oh, that's a bloody oh, that's a that's a good one. Let me find out. Let me just rattle my old brain cage around for a general knowledge challenge level four. Nah, news to me, mate. Someone looking for you. Dude in the street, he uh had a run to pickpocketed me and obviously works for him so I don't know how trustworthy he is but he's trying to get to you and uh well was he hot I mean that's relative I guess not my cup of tea but not many people are right well <sighs> unfortunately I'm a bit busy did he have anything of worth to offer nope I don't think he'd want to offer it to anyone except you and I don't even know if he has any. Out of character, I think he expressly asked you to offer him on his behalf. Offer? He, he specifically said he didn't want to talk to Ugly or Conrado. He wanted you to extend his offer to help educate people. 
educate people at the soup kitchen okay. for, re- for his information services. Yeah, okay. I relay that all very accurately and articulately. Or okay. I actually go cross-eyed as pro like I did just then because <laughs> pro is very tired. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you think? Worth looking into? Uh, look, I just... I don't fucking know. I was in the middle of dealing with being pickpocketed and heading on my way over here, so I don't have a clue. Uh, look, if I bump into him again, what what do you think? Would the What's the first thing I should look out for if he's friendly or not? Fuck it. Look, it's your call, mate. Uh, you've been around long enough to judge this shit, although you're not the best judge of character. Nope. Uh, so look, what I'd say is come up with something that makes you like a, like a fucking test or something. Just, um, see if he's got anything worth adding to the gang. If he's, what would help you? What did he say you could do? Information gathering and fucking teaching. Teaching. Well, you know, well, I mean, I guess ask pretty boy if he wants any teachers at his little experiment, but, no, uh, that's, that feels too close. I, it feels like that lets him inside. Information is... Community education, mate. Sounds like a public library to me. Yeah, but... It's still... Working inside. Working with the group. In our place. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, look, again, your call. If you want to test him, if you see him again, you can. Come up with something, mate. I'm not going to... I don't have the time to waste on every fucking person that bothers me. Or my uh, employees... And then he reaches in his back pocket and pulls out a fucking wad of slum cash and just chucks it at Pro. Okay. At least I can guarantee I'll get pickpocketed again. And I sort of walk away. <laughs> it's not a huge amount, yeah. but it's like enough to cover you for a week or so. Thanks, man. All right. Um, ah, fuck. Then his phone starts to ring. He immediately just hangs up, pours himself a drink, and he's like, I said I'm fucking busy. Starts drinking at the bar. His phone rings again. He hangs up again. Cool. Can I can I take a sneaky peek and see? Does it flash up? No. You two, the angle's wrong. He's over at the bar. <laughs> Is Johnny back? No, not yet. Now the half hour passes. 45 minutes, you know, you're all it's into the evening. Dinner. You get some takeout. Ugly orders some takeout for everyone. You get some pizza. Actually, you get some Chinese from the place next door. Um, My favourite. And, <laughs> and a battery. <laughs> Pizza, Chinese and a battery. Mexican is better. <laughs> and after another hour after dinner, Tilda steps down. We're going to need a portrait for Tilda, the amount that I use her these yeah. days. Tilda comes down the staircase uh, and there's the sound, distinct sound of dripping as she walks in as if it's been raining. But you don't think it was supposed to rain today. She walks down the steps and you see her duster is sprayed red and she's dripping a trail of blood into the bar. But she's walking confidently and fine. Um, she's She's got a shotgun, an old-fashioned double-barrel shotgun cracked over her arm with no nothing in it. She just walks in. Can I do a medical check on it? Yeah, uh, perception at a glance. Do I smell the blood? I'm going to give it to you for free because you've been around it for so long. You just smell blood and sweat walk into the room. Room. You're fine with four successes. Right. Yeah, four successes. Four successes. <laughs> you can tell she's uninjured or at least Great. not in any major way. Okay. Is that yours? Nah, love. Sits down. <sighs> Fucking ugly. I tried to call you. Ugly's like, um, What? Oh, it's a fucking bloodbath of that charity joint you got. What? You heard me? A fucking bloodbath. The kitchen. Yeah. What the fuck happened? Oh, some fucking gangbangers came in with all guns blazing, shot the shit out of the place, no. and then fucking turfed no. some mollies in there. God fucking damn it! And not pro bolts. He just heads. She just like leans back in her chair and looks as you run out as if like this is a regular day for her. Fuck's his problem. Starts lighting a cigarette. And then we chase Pro as he bolts upstairs, runs out the street, runs for 10 solid minutes. Make an endurance check. Yeah, okay. <laughs> See how you get there. 
Challenge level two, because you have adrenaline. No, I'm going to make a challenge level three. It's a 10 minute run, got but you one. have advantage. You've only got one dice. Oh, with advantage, I've got two. Two dice. Results. Oh, okay. Two so wins. you, you, what did they say? It was challenge level three, but yeah, I gave you correct. advantage. Okay. You get there, but you get there slow and you're destroyed when you get there. You're exhausted. You wish you'd taken those amphetamines. Yeah. Uh, and you get there and you are panting as you round the bend and you see the red of fire burning out of the windows of the soup kitchen. No. There are bodies in the street of civilians who got caught in the crossfire. There's a couple of bomber gangers dead as well laying there. I uh, look around for anyone who looks like they've been interacting with it, going in, coming out. There's people who are helping. There's people who are pulling boots off people and like looting the bodies already. There's a there's about three bomber gang members standing around trying to secure the joint. But who looks like they're adding to the damage? No one. No one. It's done. I'm holding my gun in my hand like like hot finger, like fucking hand shaking quaking like panting and sweating like I just want to shoot something the fire is burnt the insides are going to be torched but it's molotovs and it looks like the building's going to be lucky and it's not going to be go down like the fires are burning out now they're alcohol fires a few things have caught but it looks like some people have put out some fires but as you round and get closer and closer and closer you see on the front door there is what looks like a rail spike shot through the front of the door and on the center of the rail spike is a human heart just on its own. And on the ground next to it, a little styrofoam container just open. The exact same type you saw at the organ harvesting place. It looks like we've had the visit from the doctor. Motherfucker. And I calmly open the door. Is it in a state like it's been subdued? It's burning, but it's not a, a, an inferno now. It's like embers and little things burning here or there. It's pretty chaotic. I wrench open the door. I just want to see if there's any way, any clear path to my room. Yeah, destiny roll it. Yeah. 18. Oh. You run upstairs, covering your face with smoke. You catch, uh, your eyes catch a family. Fuck. There's a family. There's like two, not kid, like well, teenagers, younger teenagers, a mum, a dad, and they've got bowls of soup overturned, bullets riddled through the windows, and they're all dead. Um, no. As you sort of clamber upstairs. I will have seen them around, I'm assuming. I'm going to make one. Yeah, you've seen them around. Mm -hmm. And I make one more destiny roll. He served him soup. 13. And you just see the soup robot still ladling out. It's, it's like on fire and it's just ladling out soup into bowls automatically for customers that aren't there. You burst, run upstairs. What are you aiming for? I uh, just need to grab anything that I deem hard to replace. Mm -hmm. I have most of this stuff backed up and running with my own circuitry, but I've, I've also it's, got... You've always said you operate like someone who can bolt. So all your stuff, you don't use... You use things based off laptops and yeah. hard drives. So you can pull plugs, take devices. I guess it's more just out of ease of uh, resetting up the operation. Mm -hmm. I could set up yeah. from scratch anywhere, but it's like, okay, I got, I'm losing efficiency here. I'm losing time. Yeah. And that's all I got. So I just grab anything I can hold that's critical to keeping efficient. You know, obviously, and that looks like it might be reparable or in a decent state. Grab it and walk out. And right as you walk out of the room your eye just turns and catches a wall of photos and pins and red string. And the red strings burn with embers and as they all burn in and the walls and photos crinkle, it all just centers and the last one to burn, a smiling capture of a mad doctor, grinning as the embers take the picture. I pause in the doorway watching that symbolic moment <laughs> and like swear to myself that he's going to pay for this and I walk out of the building in slow motion with the flames burning behind me <laughs> super calm and looking super badass <laughs> but um yeah no uh 
shielding my only good eye, human eye from the smoke and looking mm-hmm. through it with my robotic eye and walking out of the building, heading back to the um, bar. While this has been happening, uh, Eve gestures to Seb and says, uh, I will go. Figured they'd come. Oh, it's all fucking right, love. This shit's happened every week. It's gang warfare. I've seen a few of them. <sighs> and I leave and taking a medical, like a full on medical kit with me this time that's like, maybe has like a gas mask and stuff in it as well. <sighs> you see Ugly slam his fist into the table, but he doesn't get up. He just like, his eyes narrow and he looks pissed off, but he doesn't do anything. And Tilda just goes, oh, fucking love, all right. And she flips open her shotgun, slides in two shells, cocks it, and then goes, you can't let a fucking expensive drone wander into a fucking gang wall without protection. Let's go. Thank you. And she walks after you. And just fucking got back from there and my fucking knee's playing up. By the time Eve reaches it, I imagine probably Pro, walking out. I'm going to say soon after walking out with all of his gear and everything's scattered, I'm assuming at this point, aside from the people trying to put it out and a few of the people who are yeah. there. He's just fallen to his knees and his head's against the a non-burning part of the outside of the building and he's just sort of like holding his fist up against the wall, just like... Eve approaches you and says, where's Conrado? Did I see him? Could no. I roll? You didn't see him. I didn't see him. It's been... Oh, don't fucking ran. worry about Connie. Tilda says, taking another drag of the fifth cigarette she <laughs> smoked. See, it's like, like someone would go for the asthma puffer as they're running, trying to get to this place quickly. She's been smoking. It is absolutely <laughs> fucking abhorrent. Like, did you cause this? <laughs> yeah. And then she gets there and she, yeah, she's like, oh, oh, fuck my fucking knee. Oh my God. Fucking stop worrying about Connie. He's not here. Where is he? Running the, he's running the bombers. He's fucking never here anymore. Understood. And then I just go off and I actually, I put my hand on Pro's shoulder and kind of just like look at him in the eyes. And then I go off and I go help wherever I can. You, there are wounded people, definitely. There's people with burns. There's a few people that have been more damaged by like shattering glass and things like that. Yep. Um, I just spend the next whatever helping people. As of much course. As Rest of the evening wears on. Seb is left alone with Ugly, and I think that's where we'll call it for the night. That's Unless you... Oh, Rob is giving me a face of, like, please don't stop. I guess I've caused you a war then. <laughs> nah, Seb. Fucking... That's what gang life is. That's why I avoided it for so long. Neutral, safe harbour for everyone who didn't have any other family. But all good things come to an end, mate. This was coming as soon as we took over the bombers. Whether it's... I don't even fucking know who hit us yet, but it was always coming. Busy were probably the first on my list, but uh, could have been anyone. Fuck, it was nice while it lasted after those cogs. Peace for a month or two, but uh, time to get some more young kids killed. (laughs) I don't know what help I can be, but I'll stand with you. No, you fucking won't. Metaphorically, asshole. All right, well, I did get shot three times last time, so I reckon if I strap you to my back, it might uh, keep me safe. Between the two of us, we can take six bullets. (laughs) Fuck. And uh, you can watch my back or keep an ear out for me or whatever. Now, Seb, it'll be good to have you on our side. As much as you're a fucking... Well, you're Seb. You are analytical. I remember things, Seb, and uh, you study people. 
Good bit of strategy on our side. Wouldn't be a miss. If I can do it, name it, and I'll get it done. All right. Then I feel like we have a moment that's like a handshake, but without shaking hands. Mm. Okay. Cool. Cool. He shakes your nub. <laughs> I hate that so much. Let's yeah. veto that. And we'll do like a head nod, even though I can't tell you're responding. Okay, you've used the veto word. We veto, we backtrack. There was no nub shake. Uh, and instead, you have a solemn head shake. Yep. And we end the episode, as we do with many reboot episodes, with smiles cracking through serious moments. Wow. That is our way of doing things here. <laughs> oh, God. Not the soup the kitchen. The soup kitchen. Ouch. Oh, my God. Do you know who's probably most heartbroken through all this? Patron. The Red String Club. <laughs> <laughs> At the burning of the Red String Room. Oh. Uh, uh, many of which are patrons. Yeah, nice. Who are going to... Hey! I pressed it which about six minutes ago, so... Ellipses. Yell here, Tris. AJ Macy. Professor, Professor X. Seventeen eighty. Lily Unicorn. Tickle, Tickle Duck. Duck. This is Willis. N Nick's Eye Shade. Erasable. Well done. Hell Do yeah. And whoa. Do we, we what a, them. Uh, what a society of like, civil amazing. and wonderful people. And there's so many. Thank yeah. you all so thank much. You so much yeah, support. Thank you. We'll let the scroll run again. I stopped and started just in case we needed to read one that we missed. But oh my God. Let's see. Oh, this bloody doctor. Oh. Bloody doctor. It's heavy. This is heavy shit. I do see Professor X seven and eight in London. Go to go to, I think these these be Willis. Nick's not yet arrested. Wow, good Yay. work, everyone. Well done, team. Yay! All right, thank you all for. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like pro. I couldn't relate. Oh, yeah, bloody sleepy baby. Yeah. So we are all going to say goodbye to our lovely YouTube audience, and we're going to go hang out hey, in the past, patrons. in the past with Twitch, and then we're saying we're going to say bye to Twitch. That's what we usually do, and then we're, we're going to go hang out last week with our. With our patrons okay, in our Discord after party where we all unwind, chill out. And if you want to check that out on Patreon, go check it out on Patreon. Come join it. It is a highlight of the sessions for us. It's a really... It's fun. After these sessions, and it is heavy, you need like to go, oh my God, did everyone else see that? And then we get, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you also just get to talk shit throughout the week in Discord with us. It's great. Yeah. It's really nice. And if you want Tilda character art... It's because of you patrons that we can do that. That's so thank you so much. True. It's so, so cool that we have what we have. So thank you for your support and we'll see you in the next video. <laughs> oh yeah, fucking good boy. Love <laughs>